Good morning everyone, this is Erica with Aurora Heart Healing and today I really wanted to talk to all of you about change and to be a little bit more specific, I wanted to talk about intentional change because there's a lot of different ways that we can change, shift and evolve, but being intentional with the changes, it can really bring a different layer and a different dimension to the changes that we're experiencing. One of the things that is really guaranteed is that change is always going to happen. Change can be location, environment. It can be the people that you surround yourself with. It can be for children, a grade level and teachers. And all of these mean that there is some level of change and evolution in our lives, whether it be our goals have shifted a little bit to even just what it is that we feel that we need to surround ourselves with and what we want in our lives. Change is the only guarantee, I think, in this world is that there will be change. And bringing it into intentional change, that is a little bit of a different thing that I've noticed in my life, that if I am not intentional in some of the shifts and changes that I have or that I make, it can really fall by the wayside and the shifts and changes can kind of go back into a repetitive state, confusion, frustration, or even chaos, which... I'm actually writing a blog about right now, so look out for that one because this video is going to be based a lot on that blog. Intentional change. When I was a single mom and going through a lot of struggles, just not feeling confident, not feeling worthy of a good relationship, feeling very down and out about myself. I made a conscious decision that I did not want to continue in the same pattern that I had been for so many years. And in that decision, I said, okay, I'm going to change. And I was pretty lost. I didn't know what that meant for me. I didn't know what that would look like. I didn't understand how I wanted to change because I had been sitting in my own skin for so long. But I knew that there had to be some sort of shift, some sort of change. Something had to give because there was just so much turmoil and pain inside of me that I didn't want to continue on the route that I was because I knew that not only was I suffering, but my children as well. I had at that time, I had a son and a daughter, and later my, my last daughter was born. But in that time, I really wanted something to change. And I started doing a few things differently. The things that I listened to was one of the first shifts and changes that I made. Before, I would listen to rap and not knocking it. I love a lot of the artists that are out there. I like the rhythm, the beats and everything like that. But when I started really listening to the words, there wasn't very much value placed on women. And then I started questioning, oh, well, where is, where is my devaluation coming from? So I had to start to learn how to shield myself from some of the things that were teaching me how I felt, how I should feel about myself. Listening to all the mm and hoes and all of that just made me feel like that's what all women fell into the category of. Now, this is going to be a little bit different for each person, of course, but for me and my personal experience, that's all I can share because that's who I am and that's what I've seen. <clears throat> so that was my, my number one thing that I needed to shift and change was what was I listening to? Whether it be the advice of people, where was I getting my advice from? Uh, I love my mom. She's amazing. But 
there's a lot of if you are not valuable, then you're not worth staying with. And that was really impactful to me because it was like, oh my gosh, I have to be perfect or I am not valuable. And that can be a very detrimental space to live in when you have a lot of low self-esteem and don't have confidence to build with to begin with. Uh, when I was listening to things, I started shifting my focus to people that I wanted to be more like. Of course, I can't be exactly like someone. Uh, Matthew Hussey was, is one of my really big time teachers in my life. And he was someone that said, if it, if you can't be right with yourself, then how can you be right with someone else? And in that sentence alone, it created such a deep, profound change in me that I dropped a lot of what I was doing and I was like, okay, I'm not right with myself. That resonated with me because I knew something deep and in, fundamentally inside me was not happy with where I was at. And that's the reason why I started and initiated this change, this evolution within me. So listening, paying attention and being aware of what I was listening to was one of the biggest, pro most profound changes for me. Because instead of listening to uh, Nicki Minaj or uh, at the time, it was a lot of Drake and, and Snoop Dogg and all of these different people with Khalifa, which unfortunately the message is not really get your mind right, be intelligent because your intelligence is valuable. What you have to offer inside of you as a person is worth it and valuable. It's more of the material and more of the physical that is worth it, which if you're struggling with weight, you're not going to see your value in that. So I started listening to Brene Brown. I started listening to Tony Robbins. I started listening to <clears throat> Matthew Hussey was someone I listened to constantly. And I really started to see a shift in not only my perspective, but also my environment. Next intentional change was my actions on a daily basis. And what that means for me is what was I doing each day? And I do not judge anybody, but smoking um, Mary Jane was my daily habit. And that was something that I did every day because it brought comfort to me. And the more that I started to recognize and realize what my daily habits were, watching TV for hours, being on Facebook for hours, smoking, hanging out with my friends, which was a good side to some of that because there was connection and community, but there was also what was I surrounding myself with and who and what were they bringing to my life? <clears throat> I personally don't like strip clubs. Some of my friends at that time were like, that's where we need to be. I personally don't like clubbing and going out to bars. And like I said, everyone has their own personal preference. But for me, I just felt like there wasn't a genuine connection being created in some of the environments that I was placing myself in because of some of the people I was surrounding myself with. So I started becoming very intentional with who I was surrounding myself and the whys. Why was I hanging with these certain groups of people? What was the value that I felt? A lot of the time, the value was actually not for me. It was for others because I was usually designated driver. So those people would be going out drinking. I would be sober and I would be the designated driver. I had my fun by dancing because I always loved to dance and I like to move. 
But at the end of the day, the person that was benefiting was not me at that time. It was the other people. Granted, I felt very good about making sure that my friends went home safely. But I also felt very taken advantage of because at a certain point of the night, being a sober person, I would just look around and say, okay, this party has turned. And if you are like me and you've lived in that situation, you know that at a certain point of the night, after a few um, of so many drinks, it's just not fun anymore. And you're just kind of looking from the outside looking in like, okay, this is turned from good and fun to unsafe and feeling insecure about the surroundings with, with which you're in. And for me, it was what and who am I surrounding myself with? That was another intentional change that I needed to really look at because when I started to change and shift in myself, I started to feel that resistance from others. Like, what do you mean you don't want to do this? What do you mean? Why? why what? What's the reason why you want to stay home and read a book instead of come out and hang out and party with us? Little shifts and changes like that can cause a lot of resistance because people are used to you in a certain way. But maybe you don't want to be you in that way, which is a huge shift, a huge change. But being intentional, like, hey, this is who I want to be. This is what I want to surround myself with. And this is what will be best for me is important. And it's important because fundamentally the changes when you are intentional with your changes you will start to see little shifts that really make a huge impact and a huge difference in your life. So surround yourself. Who you surround yourself in your environment is really important. And then going back to what are you listening to? Your consumption is going to be a really important key factor in these intentional changes as well. Uh, the other intentional things that the other ways that I changed and figured out my way <clears throat> around these big shifts that I was making is being very intentional and aware of what I was thinking. Thoughts, your thoughts have been with you your whole life. And I don't know about you, but there's a lot of thoughts that have been pre-recorded from a long time ago that continued to be recorded throughout my lifetime. And even now, I'm human and I still struggle with sometimes. Some are a lot more of a struggle than others. Some of them have really faded away and are not so um, deeply ingrained in my brain. But there are some of those that I definitely struggle with. And being intentional with your thoughts is so important. One of the ways that being intentional with your thoughts is when you think a thought that does not align with the reality that you want. So a lot of the reason why was why I made so many changes is because I had been in a relationship and ultimately my son was abused in that relationship and I was devastated and I never, at first I was like, I never want to be in another relationship again. And then I thought this isn't realistic because I'm human and I do want a relationship at one point in time. What is it inside of me that I don't see these abusive people because that was not my first abusive relationship. He may not have abused me directly, but he did abuse my child. And when I really thought about that, it had to have been me. I was the common denominator, which sometimes is really, really rough to recognize and evaluate. Like, okay, I'm the person that's it have that has been in all of these relationships in these relationships 
I'm the one that needs to change or these relationship themes are going to continue. And that was not only hard, but it was, what am I doing there? At first it was me beating myself up. I'm bad. I'm wrong. I'm no good. And then it was, wait a minute. I'm beating myself up just as much or more than the people that were my partner. And that was a huge aha moment for me. Because if I said, this is what I deserve, I deserve to be hit. I deserve to not be happy because of who I am or whatever I thought or my past what's happened to me or what I've experienced or the dumb kid things that I did, I was in a sense giving permission to people to treat me poorly. And that was a really hard pill to swallow. I mean, even right now, it's kind of hard to swallow to think that that's what I was thinking. But fundamentally, that's what was in my mind that was ingrained in me. It was the messages of well, you picked that person to have children with and now you've got to suck it up. Or you chose incorrectly and now you have to deal with these consequences. And a variety of different things of maybe it was women are only good for one thing. Those were all very powerful statements that were heard by me in so many different times in my life, either through the music I was listening to, through the family members that I was being influenced by, or for the friends that I had surrounded myself with. Men only want women for one thing. In reality, everyone I think fundamentally wants partnership and love, and I was only operating on one belief. And limiting my belief to men only want women for one thing limited my experience to men are mistreating me because I've already fulfilled the one thing that they want and there's nothing else I can do. But in reality, we want partnership, not just men, but relationships. I had been filtering out my friendships, my family relationships, and my my partnerships through that lens of I am only wanted for one thing. And whatever that one thing was, once that one thing was fulfilled, then I was worthless. My I had no value. And that next intentional change was when I heard that little voice in my head saying, oh my God, Erica, you suck. Or, hey, what's wrong with you? The what's wrong with me was a huge shift in perspective because instead of thinking what's wrong with you, it was, huh, I'm curious to know why it is you're thinking that. What is there truth in this thought? Is there truth in this belief? And honestly, nine times out of 10, I could find evidence around me in the world that said, that's not true. If I continue to go back to my old beliefs, surroundings, environment, I could definitely find the evidence that that was true. But each time I identified why and some evidence that showed me it wasn't true, my beliefs started to shift more and more. Just like in business, my my belief that me doing what I love to do wouldn't be valuable, I started to find more and more reasons why it was. One of the most limiting beliefs that I kept thinking about because I was in such a a detrimental religious situation ship situation ship with a lot of different types of religions was there's not very many spiritual people whoa 
what a limiting belief that was. As I learned, as I grew, as I built, I started to see more and more, hey, there's spirituality all around me. I went to a celebration of life last weekend and a woman stood in front of everyone and talked about her channeled message from the deceased. I don't know if I would have heard that when I believed that there was not very many spiritual people around me. I don't know that my mind would have caught on to the fact that that is a spiritual belief that we can receive information from somewhere outside of ourselves or so deeply within ourselves that it is, it is made of pure light and love. And that was huge for me. Because one of the biggest limiting beliefs I had was there's just not a lot of spiritual people. There's more religious people that will deny my beliefs and say you're wrong and you're going to hell for what you believe. On that same day, walking to, to my home that day with my daughter, we ran into a homeless man and he started telling me about how it was so hard for him to find other spiritual beings and how he had been religiously injured by we'll just say religious religious entities or people <clears throat> that would not accept him for who he was and what he believed which he said i think that the closest i can say is i'm buddhist because i believe in love and kindness as my religion and I sat there and I said, you know, I used to think like you and I believe there's, there's more because I am just like you. I love people that love and that are open and that are understanding, kind and compassionate. I want to help people fundamentally. I just want people to feel loved in my presence and I don't want them to feel judged and unsafe. And as tears were rolling down his eyes, he said, wow, I never thought that that was a thing. And in that moment, I realized more and more that my beliefs in there's not a lot of spiritual people are shifting more and more. So that is another intentional way to change is intentionally watching your thoughts and finding evidence for what it is that you want in your life. Because if you want love and abundance, you will find it. If you want judgment, you will find it. Whatever it is that you're looking for, my friend, you will find it. But the more that you are intentional with your change, intentional with what you want, you will find it. I challenge you today to go and find what your change looks like for you. What is the change that you want for you? Maybe it's leaving, leaving behind a habit. Maybe it's spending more time in connection and community. Maybe it's having more fun with your family. Maybe it's visiting volunteer work. Whatever the case may be, just know that you can find it. And when you put your intention towards what you want to change, it'll make it so much easier to shift and change. One little step at a time, one centimeter, one inch, one yard, one mile. It's all possible, my friends. Just remember to be intentional with your change. With love.